guys, welcome back to the channel. So tonight I'm going on a little bit of an adventure. I'm driving about an hour north of where I'm staying to some dark skies and we're going to be trying to capture a super duper duper faint nebula that actually isn't inside our galaxy at all. And what I'm going to be going for is the integrated flux nebula, which is of a really faint dust cloud which lies at high galactic latitudes, so towards the north, um, around Polaris, Ursa Major, those parts of the sky. And what this is, is intergalactic dust that's only illuminated by the light from our own galaxy. So it's incredibly faint. Um, and that's why they call it the Integrated Flux Nebula, because it can only be seen by the integrated light from our whole galaxy. So we're going to be trying to go for that. Of course, you know I'm going to be using the RH200 at F3, and we're going to be trying some long exposures to try to pull out a ton of detail from the IFN, which probably I wouldn't be able to see with any other scope. So follow me along, and hopefully we get some nice pictures tonight. Hey, so I just finished the drive out here. Um, there are tons of people camping right now out here, and uh, so I had to kind of rough it down a bit of a, uh, a rougher dirt road to find a spot that was unoccupied, but we got ourselves a nice spot, and we're pretty close to some interesting foreground rocks for maybe some interesting, um, I don't know, Milky Way shots later, perhaps before sunrise if I'm feeling it, which I probably won't be feeling it, but we'll see. So. Anyways, now it's time to get the telescope set up and get ready for the night. So I am all set up for the night. Uh, I got both my setups I'm going to be using here and uh, I'm just going to walk you through what exactly we got. So to uh, pass the time around tonight, I've got this little setup here that I'm going to be using to take some wide angle stuff and then I'm going to also throw on my telephoto lens on this. This is a, um, a Skywatcher Star Adventurer to I whatever the new one is, that's what that is. We've got a ball head and I've got a Canon 60 with a Rokinon 14 millimeter on it. And that'll be pretty good for some wide angle stuff. Maybe some time lapses, you never know. I did bring an extra camera battery, so <laughs> we'll be able to do lots of, lots of fun stuff with that. Anyways, over here what I got, this is what I'm gonna be using to try to shoot the integrated flux nebula. And this is pretty much uh, the ideal setup for trying to shoot the integrated flux nebula. I've got a Veloce RH200 at f3, so I'm just going to be shooting super fast and that'll let me pull out pretty much all the detail in the IFN that I can. Then we've got a Optech Leo for the focus, uh, a QHY600 with Chroma LRGB filters, and I'm auto guiding all of this with a ZWO Mini guide which is kind of shoved back here. Anyways, that's going to handle my auto guiding. I don't need too accurate of auto guiding with this system since my exposures don't need to be very long and because I'm tracking with a um, Paramount My T, so my auto guiding is usually pretty good. I've also got a uh, QHY pole master here to do the polar alignment and I could not live without this thing. It's amazing. Um, for powering it all, I got this uh, Jackery Explorer 1000 battery. And I also have some solar panels for it, and I absolutely love this thing. Um, Jackery sent it out to me, 
and it by far beats any deep cycle I've used because this thing only weighs like 24 pounds and my deep cycles weigh 50 pounds. So this saves me so much physical effort. It's really amazing and there's a nice LED display. And since it's a uh, lithium ion, it holds charge so much better than any um, deep cycle I've used. So I really, I really love that battery. And we've also got the laptop, of course, to control everything. But for now, I just got to uh, wait for the old sunset and then we will get on imaging. So I'll see you guys later. Alright guys, it is nighttime, um, pretty late twilight, the high clouds have mostly gone away, so it's time to uh, get to imaging, as they say. So first thing first, um, I'm just going to check my auto guiding here to make sure that my calibration data still makes sense. I've been having some weird issues with it lately, uh, looks like we even still need to focus the guider, so I'm going to do that as well right now. Which is just going to involve shimmying my guide cam in and out here until we get a sharp focus. That looks acceptable from four and a half feet away. All right. Yeah, that's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some guide stars here. We're going to start guiding. And I'm going to double check my calibration by issuing a manual guide pulse to see how it responds. Looks like, yeah, it's already deviating in the wrong direction. So what we're going to have to do to start off the night here is actually calibrate the guide, guide scope. Because it keeps messing up post-meridian flip. And so let me uncheck this setting here. And uh, let's go recalibrate this. Let's pick a star. Well, yeah, I already have Sirius pulled up. Let's go to Sirius. Oh, let's go to Sirius. All right. <laughs> Sirius is a relatively good place to do recalibration this time of year. So we will go there to do it. All right, let me tell you guys about what my plan for the night is. So as you saw earlier from when I was setting up my sequence, I think that I'm going to do something a little ambitious. We're going to go for a two panel mosaic because I think some of the IFN and the area frames up better with a two panel mosaic. Um, there's some interesting features that compose themselves nicely. So it's a, it's a little ambitious. I don't know if I'm going to get enough IFNs as kind of an experiment. So I really don't know how it's going to end up. I'm trying to uh, push myself in the astrophotography world as they say. But yeah, we're going to go for a two panel. Hopefully get enough IFN to show things nicely. Um, the good thing though is this is one of the best times of year to shoot M81 and M82. We'll have a total of 10 hours of imaging time. Sunrise to sunset, sorry, sunset to sunrise all over 30 degrees altitude in the sky. So I'm expecting it's going to be a pretty good night for data collection. And I'm pretty excited to get to it once this thing finishes calibrating, of course, which God knows how long that will take. If you're going to attempt to capture the IFN yourself, um, there's a couple things that you should keep in mind. Um, first off, you need to be somewhere dark. It's really not possible to shoot this nebula from a backyard. I mean, it's possible to see the nebula, but to produce an image of high quality is really not possible from an area of high light pollution. So you should try to drive out to the desert like I am here. You should also try to avoid the moonlight as much as possible, come out on a new moon. I'm coming out on a third quarter moon. So my second panel of my mosaic, I will be combating um, light pollution from the moon, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, I'm hoping the normalization between the two panels will function enough that it won't matter. Also, we're pretty far from the moon in the sky. So the hope there is that um, I won't have any steep gradients. It's just gonna be a flat gradient from the moon being on the other side of the sky and that is not of too much concern to me. I've done some deep sky imaging before on a full moon, but just the opposite side of the sky from a dark site. And 
it still beats light pollution from a mile. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind, which might be a counterintuitive. The light pollution from the moon is much less than it is from city lights. So try to get away from city lights first and then the moon second. Um, the other thing with capturing the IFN is fast optics are king. Uh, you want speed because this stuff's faint. You either want speed or you want time. Ideally, you want both speed and time. Like if I were, um, if I had infinite free time to shoot this, I would probably come out here and shoot it for like three or four nights straight. So what I'm gonna do first off here is I'm going to center myself on the first panel of my mosaic, which will include M81 and M82. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rattle off a test exposure and see, you know, see what's going on, see how things are looking. But first we gotta get plates solved here and pointed over at our target. Yeah, and we see there we got the boys in the field of view. We should be a little bit off of our target here. But yeah, I'm gonna take a test exposure. I'll see what I can see now. Um, keep in mind it's still twilight, so there is gonna be a bit of gradient action, um, which means the sub I take now will not look like how, how it takes later. But I wanna just see whether or not I blow out the core of the galaxies, because that will change how I go about capturing this. Um, with IFN, of course, you want the longest exposures that you can muster for your camera. If you're using a DSLR, that's uncool, then you're imaging somewhere warm, you're pretty limited and it might be a better idea to just not shoot this. Um, for example, if I came out here with a DSLR, I would quickly run into thermal noise problems before I'd be able to actually capture anything of meaning with my telescopes. But if you're using a cooled camera, you can think about maybe doing some longer exposures to show more detail and then doing some shorter exposures to get back the core of the galaxies. So that's something important to consider when you are uh, thinking about capturing this. So I'm gonna run an autofocus and then we're gonna start auto guiding on this and we're gonna rattle off a quick five minute sub and we'll see where we're at in terms of detail and highlights blowing out. So yeah, let's wait for the sub to come in. All right, the first frame is in and it looked pretty good. So uh, we're gonna be rolling five minute exposures here and just imaging all night, I guess. So yeah, this is the, the beginning of the night. Um, five hours per panel, 10 hours total is our goal. I might drop the number of exposures just so I can ensure that I'm gonna get everything I want tonight. Anywho, yeah, this uh, should be good. <laughs> I'll uh, update you guys if anything happens to go awry, but capture should be pretty straightforward here. Good morning everyone. So the night is over. The sun rose a little bit ago. It's like seven or something. Anyways, we got all the data we needed last night, but the high clouds never really went away. So in the interest of keeping my image quality good, I decided to keep it to one panel. If you have conditions that are changing, like high clouds and moon between two panels, you might create some issues when you go to stitch. For example, one frame might have some high clouds and the other one won't. And you may not be able to blend the two images together if you have changing weather conditions like that. So it's better to wait for mosaics on a night where conditions are a little more static. So. I decided to keep it to one panel. We should still get a lot of IFN and we still will have the galaxies, which is uh, pretty important. So now I'm gonna get to packing everything up, which is real fun. And then we're gonna drive on home and get to editing some of this data, so. Hey guys.
guys, so I am back from imaging. I've got all my data stacked. <clears throat> Once again, uh, it crashed my computer a couple different times while I tried to pre-process this. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a pretty difficult process. Um, QHY600 has a massive sensor, for those who don't know. Um, each of these images is 64 megapixels and about 2,000 kilobits per each image. So it's pretty intensive actually editing all of this, but um, yeah, we got it all stacked now. So I'm just gonna go through, process this, and see how much IFN we can get. And you can kind of see already um, any sub exposures that there's a little bit. Um, one corner of my RH200 is pretty bad because my adjustment screws are stripped. I can't really fix that corner, but yeah, there's some there's some action going on. Looks like we also got a nice reflection from a nearby star. That's always cool. But yeah, you can already see there's a. IFN in this image, so let's go ahead and see how much of it we can pull out. Mm -hmm. 